Whether you have already updated or you're thinking of updating Final Cut Pro to version 10.7, this video covers all of the new improvements and one hack that I'm willing to bet you don't know. So stick around. Let's start with one of the most anticipated features, even though it's been available in command posts for years, the scrolling timeline. You can enable the scrolling timeline by heading over to Final Cut Pro settings, playback, and enable the scroll timeline continuously during playback option. Now, when I play back, the timeline scrolls. The best part about this is that the waveforms update in real time, which is great. Oddly enough, Matthew O'Brien mentioned in one of his videos that when scrolling is disabled, the waveforms don't automatically generate. When you don't have scrolling enabled, even in the version 10.7, you lose your audio waveform unless you hit the pause button, uh, the space bar to pause playback. Like if I were to scroll ahead while playing back, these waveforms stay blank. But there is a hack to automatically have the waveforms generate even when you're not using the scrolling timeline. Quit Final Cut Pro, open up Terminal and type in the following command. I'll leave a link down below if you want to copy it. And thanks to Chris Hocking, the creator of Command Post for this tip. Now when I play back, I can scroll forward and my waveforms regenerate automatically. The only downside is that if you enable the scrolling timeline and turn it off again, you'll have to use the terminal command again. If you often find yourself turning the scrolling timeline on and off, you can set up a keyboard shortcut to do so. Simply head over to Final Cut Pro, Command Sets, Customize and then search for Scroll. Then you can set it to any command, like Control Option Command S for scroll. Next up, we have Collapse to Connected Storyline. If you often add B-roll clips on top of the magnetic timeline and you end up stacking clips as you're building your edit, this feature will help you to tidy up your timeline. So you can select the clips, right click and select Collapse to Connected Storyline. It will trim the clips to show only the portions that would have been visible and puts them in a secondary storyline which you can see with this box. That means it acts as its own mini magnetic timeline above the primary storyline. You can also select the clips and remove them from the storyline with the shortcut Option Command and the up arrow. This feature is not meant for grouping multiple layers of clips, titles, effects and composites etc. For that you would still want to use a compound clip with the shortcut being Option G. Speaking of shortcuts, there is a default shortcut to collapse clips to the connected storyline, but if you already have a custom set of shortcut keys like I do, then you won't see this new shortcut when you right click on the clip. Thanks to Alex4D for pointing this out on Matthew O'Brien's video. If I go back to Final Cut Pro command sets and select the default set, I can now right click to show the shortcut, which is shift command and the down arrow. Video roll colors. I did a video about the power of rolls, which I would highly recommend checking out if you don't already use rolls to their full potential. Until now, whatever your audio roll color is set to is what the color of your video clip would be, regardless of whether or not you had a different roll for the video. But now, if you have a different color roll assigned to your video clips, you can use the shortcut Ctrl S to expand the audio components and see the different video and audio roll colors. This is super handy if you're working with multiple cameras in massive projects and want to stay organized. Machine Learning Object Tracker The Object Tracker got a nice little update which uses machine learning to better track objects. I have this clip here of the bicycle going behind some trees. I'll add a new track down here and to make use of the machine learning model, I'll just make sure that this drop down menu is set to machine learning. I'll create a track around the cyclist and when I hit analyze, Watch how it continues to track the cyclist even when he goes behind the tree. I can go frame by frame in this more complicated section with loads of trees and watch how the track even gets smaller when the cyclist is more hidden behind the trees. But the track stays locked onto the cyclist. So that's a welcome update to an existing feature. Foster H.264 and HEVC exports. If you have projects longer than three minutes, when you hit export, go to settings and you'll see this allow export segmentation box. This sends segments of your video to available media engines for simultaneous processing. And you'll need macOS Sonoma and an M1 Max, M1 Ultra, M2 Max, M2 Ultra or M3 Max chip. I saw some of my fellow Final Cut Pro YouTubers doing some tests on shorter videos and while segmented exports were slightly faster, there wasn't a massive difference. However, I ran a test using my M1 Max chip with a much longer edit, nearly 1 hour and 18 minutes 
and without segmentation, it took 38 minutes and 34 seconds to export. With segmentation, it took only 15 minutes and 10 seconds. I will definitely be doing some more testing, but that's a significant difference on much longer edits. I'd love to hear some of the results of your tests with and without segmentation, so please go ahead and leave those results in the comments down below. Third-party plugins. I waited before updating Final Cut Pro to version 10.7 because I was really busy on a bunch of client projects and I never update in the middle of projects, mostly because I don't want my plugins to break while I'm still in the middle of a project. I tested all of my plugins in Final Cut Pro 10.7 and all of them worked. Here's a list of everything I tested if you want to compare it to your own plugins. Now I know some of these are going to be welcome improvements to some people and many other people are going to compare these updates to the updates that DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro are getting. And there's no doubt that the features in DaVinci and Premiere Pro are amazing and I would love to see some of those features in Final Cut Pro as well. However, as much as I would love all of those extra features, Final Cut Pro still works for me. It allows me to do everything I need for my own videos and for my client videos, and I know I can do everything I need to do in Final Cut way faster than any other app. I'm staying optimistic that this is just the beginning from Apple and that hopefully we'll see many more needed updates. If you want to update, I'd highly recommend backing up your Final Cut Pro app and libraries first so you don't break any libraries that you're still working on and that you can easily roll back to a previous version of Final Cut Pro if you need to. I go into more detail on that in this video, so make sure you watch that before updating to avoid a ton of frustration.